so yeah, just a bit about me. Um, I'm developer advocate at Cisco, um, developer relations team. I'm actually uh, from Austria, so speaking from Austria there, uh, and usually like coming from a, a software, classic software engineering and networking background there. Uh, I also have to say, so I am um, taking most of uh, the part over from my colleague, Christopher van der Made. So maybe you see uh, in some sample codes like his name. So just would like to mention him um, uh, who can't um, like uh, present today, uh, but uh, I definitely uh, can talk to you about uh, this as well. Uh, what do I have planned for you today? So the agenda is uh, pretty simple and I hope it's uh, you get as much out as possible with uh, these scenarios there. Um, so at first I would like to set the stage about okay uh, where where we are or like what uh, what is uh, what is this about. Um, then uh, I will go through uh, five uh, common vulnerabilities and you can see, so I'm staying here completely at the, uh, at the coding level. So basically on what can you do or what kind of mistakes you shouldn't do, especially when you code in Python. Um, of course, in a container environment, in a Kubernetes environment. And then I will uh, end with a notable tool set for you. So the main part of the, of the presentation of the session will be about classic coding. Um, and then, of course, there is a uh, help there, especially like after deploying the application. Um, there you have monitoring tools, um, especially for uh, cloud native environments, for especially for Kubernetes environments, uh, which I definitely want to mention here as well. Um, cool. If you have any questions, I hope it's fine like uh, to take this um, after a couple of minutes um, or in the chat if this is okay. All right, so setting the, uh, the stage. So first of all, uh, should I be worried about my Hello Python, uh, Hello World of Python script, right? So not all uh, of our scripts, or especially when you're testing, are top priority, right? Uh, so this is um, basically uh, best practice uh, to write secure code, that's for sure, if, especially with testing. But um, at minimum, and this is more important, you should do, uh, know your code's weaknesses. Um, so basically, it's about you don't you don't need to secure uh, your hello world or Python script and so on. But um, since uh, you are like um, interested about this field, I guess you have already, uh, already written some Python code, and this is now you would like to take this one further, and this is where you would like to implement it. And a classic uh, quote is uh, from Confucius, and I think this this really sets the setting, the security here is about to know what you know. But what you do not know, this is actually true knowledge. So you have the field on what you know, like what runs, and then to do what actually you do not know that you are actually uh, mentioning it or that you know this, this is actually that you have some really powerful knowledge there. And with that being said, I would like to also go through uh, the OWASP list. So I don't know if you're familiar with that and make uh, let this be, and I want to make this as interactive as possible. So if you, and I'm opening here now my uh, my map browser, you can see here that there's a website, ovest.org, if you're not familiar with it. And this is this organization is actually bringing out the top 10 um, uh, security issues um, uh, from software engineering or like from, from developer uh, um, uh, application. So you can see here, um, there is a list. Um, so like with the top 10 list of 21. Uh, and there's also like a really cool um, a list like what has changed. So you can really see like what kind of um, what kind of issues are going up and which are basically number one there. And um, I like no worries, I already uh, checked this list here. And you can see the top 10 list is actually broken access control, which went up actually for, for five places up to number one. Uh, this will be covered. So then injection uh, will be covered. Like uh, you can see just a bit of example of the oldest uh, top 10 list. Then vulnerable and outdated components, plastic one, uh, and number nine as well, especially in coding security, logging, and monitoring failure. So you just can see a bit that um, this, um, the, the basic the vulnerabilities which are there, uh, they are actually uh, based on uh, on the OWASP and based on uh, specific research, what mostly um, uh, Chris, uh, Chris and I did. So yeah, so. One other important thing, like when it comes to the to the OWASP, to the um, top 10, is about, um, before going into the vulnerabilities, the speed of development versus security. 
So it's a classic thing that um, where where should we focus on, right? Or where should you focus on? So basically, the developers you have the developer point of view where they are focusing on a useful language, uh, creating useful features. Uh, you know, so they collaborate with um, uh, security teams only if there is some system investigation, if there's some bugs and so on. Um, but this is basically it. And then you have the security point of view where you have hopefully, and this is, it really depends also on the, on the environment, of course, app security, app secure, where teams, where they ensure developers, hey, write secure software, right? So like check out your dependency, um, create, do some uh, training, do some testing, create some test lines there. Uh, most importantly, of course, create a pipeline even for that. Um, and then on the other hand, it's like the Stack Ops team, right? Like this is really a team which is like from the operations part of you, which is going more into the investigating the events, um, like oh, that could be uh, uh, like security incident or breaches or these plastics. Um, and with this together, of course, there are some tool sets out there. And tool sets, um, um, I will talk a, la a bit later on and in, in, in between on what's developers uh, can can uh, can also focus on um, but now i really would like to focus on just the vulnerabilities um, in the code and then again uh, more on the security side hey uh, like um, uh, with ap application security um, and then of course with uh, with the operation part um, cool so let's start with um, a classic one with the first one um, uh, and this is just like a arbitrary uh, Every number, every uh, uh, order, uh, so every code execution. So, what is it exactly? So, an attacker's ability to run commands or um, uh, or code on target machines in a target uh, process. So, this is actually a classic, most uh, like a common vulnerability in Python, and you can also do this like um, when a user has some input there. So uh, classic, if there is a database uh, in um, a query, like with SQL, if there is a common ex injection, like if there is an input there, right? And uh, if it's not possible elsewhere, like otherwise, the, there is like a user input, which are directly passed into the, into the, uh, into the function. And uh, usually it's like a lack of input sanitation. Um, this is a classic reason for that. But uh, I would say, let's actually uh, look at the, at the demo there. Uh, so I'll uh, open here now uh, my uh, Visual Studio code and uh, going to the first one here. So this is, and I will make this a big bit bigger uh, and then you can see it. All right, so you can see this, this, this is a classic input. So like um, a classic input screen. So when I uh, press something, uh, um, type something here to compute. So two times two, the result is four. So this is pretty easy, right? But what else you could do theoretically is that especially um, you can import uh, the uh, operating system package there. So like, again, when I run this here, uh, I import it and I actually can see, hey, this is actually the whole uh, file system list there. And another thing, what I guess uh, you don't want to do in a way, you can also execute some stuff. So a classic would be, for example, uh, to get uh, the, uh, the, cube, uh, the config there uh, of your Kubeflow settings. Um, again, yes, let me, uh, yeah, I don't have the Kubernetes installed, but, but for that, um, for that, it should, uh, it should work. So like you can also get the, uh, the cluster setting there. And now, um, how can we, uh, how can we solve this? And let me just go back to the, uh, to the slide there. Um, so as, before, as as, uh, as I said, it's like uh, sanitize and validate the user inputs um, first uh, before passing them to the to the system commands, right? So classic or like what what are uh, good examples of Python libraries? What you can use is the SD Python uh, module there, um, Schlex, for example. Um, so these these would be some uh, some classic um, um, test, um, like um, uh, modules where uh, what can be solved with that. And uh, let's also check out the the, um, uh, the the solution for that. So with that, um, I actually put um, so here. This is uh, basically the, uh, the 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 main the main commands there. So here you have again the input, uh, and then this input will actually uh, be validated here. 
So we have a def, uh, we have a function there which validate the user input, and it uses actually uh, the uh, EST library. So basically, what it does uh, there again is like an, um, a function within a function with is arithmetic. Um, and here, actually, what it does, it actually parses the user input and creates a, some kind of like a tree, uh, a tree there, and check uh, for each value. Hey, is this a, uh, is this a, like a string? Is this um, a number? Like whatever. So if we uh, if we compile this, uh, sorry, like if, if we execute this, um, then uh, we type here something for compute. So let's do uh, three times three. So it actually. The uh, um, three multiples of three it actually it, um, says the results there, and then you can see here that uh, there is the the tree of uh, the um, of the of the of the module, and you can see like on the left there is uh, it, it analyzes hey uh, there is on the left there is an integer, the operator is uh, to multiply, and on the right side there is again a constant uh, with uh, with uh, this kind of value. And uh, you can also, when we uh, tie this again, uh, we can also like expand the tree and just do it like this. And then we we actually adding a node there, we adding a, um, a connection there and you can see, hey, the tree is actually growing, right? So you can see like, where is the offset and so on. So these kinds of, or like these kind of ASD libraries, super easy, super cool to use. Also, once you know it easy, then you can actually uh, see, hey, um, this is my, um, this is my, uh, the string, this is an integer, or this is like where I would like to have my, uh, my users to, to go in there. Um, cool. And uh, once again, so I will uh, check it um, here. So this is uh, the second, uh, next one is directory traversal attack. Um, so maybe like from the, uh, from the, uh, how is it called, like from, from the name, uh, it's like, um, again, always uh, number three. Um, so like, oops, uh, sorry, just, just to mention, like just to have the relation there. And uh, this is usually caused by improper user input validation. So again, this is about something, hey, uh, what uh, you can, uh, definitely, um, um, like clarify, um, especially when it comes to in which directory re the, the, the user should have access to or can save files. So what is, what is it? So like it can lead to the sensitive files to be exposed. And then of course you can do remote uh, code execution, which is not that uncommon actually. So what happens like, um, the path of the file, which is accessed by the Python script, uh, this is not properly checked. So you can see here um, the, the attacker classic can manipulate the path. So it's like um, uh, going to a password file or like, you know, having some some kind of um, uh, unique characters there uh, so that uh, uh, that they can actually access the path there. And uh, yeah, let's uh, check it actually out in the demo. So if we go again to the vulnerability here. Hi, Flo. Would you yeah. mind increasing the uh, oh yeah, sure. Yes, code a bit more. Thank you. Right. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Thanks for the feedback. All right. So you can see it um, here now that we have again simply file location input. Then we open a file and we have the file content there. And I guess you already know. So like um, on the left side, you can see like I can type in here foo bar, which is totally fine. This is this file we would like to access. So we would would like to say something in there. We execute it and it's the hello world part. But you could also theoretically do the same and um, exploit like here the, the cube config. So, which is definitely not uh, the, uh, the the best way. Um, so what can we do instead of it? Like with these kinds of things. And this is not uh, like with ASD, of course, we can work as well. However, um, there is uh, there are some other uh, best practices there. So basically, um, a good thing is to maintain an allowed list of files, especially like if you want to access it, or especially when you say something in a directory, like, you know, a user is uploading something, then use definitely a static save directory. So um, a classic thing would be, of course, if the user uh, cannot change the, the path, for example, so that you just select it, uh, or the user is just selecting the, the file name and that all the files will be stored there, if this is okay. Um, but um, this is uh, this would be the same. If it's not possible, then uh, there's also a, a, a solution what you can do. The other thing is about uh, don't store, of course, sensitive configuration files inside the, the, the web root. I think this is um, the classic, but still some people are, are unfortunately still doing it. 
um, and validate the user input by accepting only specific and good data. And good data, or like um, especially or known uh, file paths, uh, I will um, I will show uh, I will show it. Like the, the best practice is actually not to sanitize the data with with the ESD file tree. Um, uh, do it like this. So I, again, I'm opening here the uh, uh, the number three. It was. And here you go. So what it does actually, and maybe you can see it's like we set a save directory, and the save directory is actually uh, from the the parent path. Like this is because of um, demo purposes uh, slash foo, and this is the save directory. And uh, when the user is asking, hey, uh, the the input location, so I will just execute it. I actually say um, I don't know something else like uh, slash etc slash uh, slash slash um, slash or slash etc just. Then you can see that the input uh, input file path is etc. The real uh, file path is uh, private etc. Longest common path prefix. So this is like where um, there it's like uh, the the input and the actual save directory. They are being um, they are being compared. It's like only the root basically one is is uh, the common uh, file uh, file path. And then you can see hey a request directory is not same as the save directory. So uh, what um, what would be a good input part? Like the user can only do again uh, foo slash bar uh, txt, um, and then uh, you can see that um, no, it's not in this save directory, and it should be there. Okay, I moved something around before that. I shouldn't have done it. Uh, that's the thing. But usually, what uh, the the classic path is is that with pathlib. And then again, with the um, with the exception or with the prefix, you are actually saying, "Hey, if the prefix and this is what you're checking against it is uh, the same path as the save uh, directory, as the save dir on uh, what you have actually set up there, uh, then uh, this is like uh, this directory is is uh, not the same, right? But if you actually check against it." Uh, then uh, the file content, then the user is allowed to, uh, to read it. So this is the the, um, uh, the, the classic path to say, hey, um, select select a safe directory and change and and basically cha uh, change it uh, with uh, with the prefix on what you have there. All right. So then let's go to uh, to the other uh, to the next part. So it's like what uh, what um, what you can do. And this is uh, this is like the uh, outdated library. Um, this is also, I think, a, um, a classic one. So um, keep in mind, like it's a classic. Like libraries are written by by humans, and we do mi mistakes. And mistakes, especially, are getting exploited. Mistakes are getting patched. So we forget to update the code. We have like dependency and so on. And um, uh, this is also like always uh, number six there. And what is uh, important here, like here's an example that uh, always update it and always um, also check um, uh, check the change log. But usually you you need to work like uh, with uh, you need to work and code something. So um, before checking the, the the change log, there are also like some other tools what you can use, which are coming a bit. Before that, this is a classic example like requests. You can see like from 219, there is like <laughs> it's like not secure. So definitely use the request library. I think everybody knows it. Uh, it's like 220. So uh, basically, uh, what is um, uh, like there is a vulnerability. This is happens like there is some HTTPS to HTTP redirect, uh, which is like um, not so good for the uh, for sniffers there. And um, what is the uh, how you can you solve it? So there are actually some capabilities of on how you can solve it. And I would like to go now um, into the into the two things, which is the static application security testing uh, SAS, and also runtime application staff protection RASP. So this is basically what I uh, would like to uh, would like to uh, propose as as a as a as a, as a solution. And um, SAS, I would like to demo with GitHub. So um, with GitHub, maybe you're familiar. There is like code and security analysis. So if you enable all these um, all these settings there, uh, then you actually get um, a, a message like this: "We found a potential security vulnerabilities in your dependency." 
And this is pretty cool because like when you go to, to GitHub and I'm going now to my GitHub account and I check, uh, go with the requirements and I change the requirements to, uh, we saw it like 219 and then we commit the changes. Then uh, you actually see directly, hey, we found uh, security vulnerability there. The same you can do with a package JSON, like with um, uh, with Node.js and so on. Um, uh, but this is uh, basically like a really cool thing that you can see. Hey, um, there uh, there is something happening, and also there is uh, you can uh, like define a bot there where you get an email where you get um, um, like a, a messaging uh, request there uh, to say hey uh, there is something wrong with my with my code there. Cool. And uh, yeah, like other uh, things are there. Um, uh, you will have uh, like uh, uh, um, alerts and so on. And um, this didn't happen right now, but like there will even be a PR uh, to mitigate uh, the, the risk there. Um, yeah, then what else is there uh, in order to save it? Like this is classic um, code, but uh, just for, for you to, to mention, there is also like a runtime application staff protection. And this, uh, I used uh, Cisco App Dynamics for that. So uh, based on that, this is uh, you can run this on uh, uh, on a Kubernetes cluster, for example. So just to have like some visual screenshots, I think these are the best that you can see. So on the right side, you can see, hey, uh, like uh, the App Dynamics is a runtime uh, installed uh, when uh, when you're executing uh, your 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 uh, your application, and uh, you can see, hey there are some security events happening. And this is actually happening on like during runtime. So there is no nothing happening um, like on GitHub uh, before that. So it actually, this is happening uh, like when the application is, is actually executing. And uh, you can see uh, at runtime, hey, there is a vulnerability library or hey, there are, uh, there is some, some, some outdated code running. Uh, and uh, there is also like a calculated uh, risk factor there. Uh, and of course, you can go more in detail. Hey, what is this about? Uh, you can see, okay, is it super severe? Like, is this like a really public knowledge? Or is there something like uh, this, this has been solved like uh, for ages? So you definitely should do something there. Um, and then, uh, yeah, like the SecOps team uh, can view the attack. Like this is a bit from the SecOps team. Uh, but then again, uh, they can check with the owner, with the application owner, hey, um, like uh, the responsible code. Hey, where where is actually the the details? Uh, the details there. Cool. Then yeah, let's uh, go to number three, which is then incomplete assertions. And uh, I don't know if you're familiar with assertions, but these are especially for debugging. So just like uh, upfront, this is uh, mostly for debugging, which is also like a really important um, as a tool, especially when you would like to check. Hey, like, uh, is this actually like, is this the right code? Should it be executed? Should the user actually come this far when this error message is, 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 is being displayed? So what does it mean? It's like, so when a Python assertions are used to evaluate the condition. So uh, like, uh, like a classic Boolean ex expression. So, um, if the condition is true, like if you can uh, do it with, uh, with the, um, with the, um, expression here, like in Python, you, they assert and then the expression. And then, um, actually, if this is true, the execution, uh, a Python will actually, the interpreter will, uh, will go to the next line. But otherwise, it will actually show, uh, show an error. And, uh, this is especially good for, for debugging. And, uh, I have here, like, a, um, also brought here a classic example. So when you go to, so we, and the, the code, by the way, I will, um, is, is shared on GitHub. So I will, uh, share it anyways. And you can see, and this is uh, pretty like, once you understand it, uh, also good to know, it's like, you see, hey, uh, uh, the variable to assert is like a foo. We define foo, the string foo. And then we just type in here assert and say, hey, like, is this string or var to assert, is this actually foo? And then uh, if this is true, then actually nothing happens. It will just uh, print the next line, right? But if it's the assert to, um, to uh, assert is like bar, then actually it will return an error and I will just uh, uh, run it. And you can see, like we actually print next line one, but then you can see here that um, to assert uh, the variable to assert bar is actually assertion error. And you can put in there anything you like, right? Like you can put in there a number and say, hey, number one is assert number uh, more than zero, or is there, is it like a specific um, error code you would like to have? 
So this is all what um, assert what uh, what you can uh, what you can test there. All right, um, then let's actually go uh, to uh, the next part and uh, how to solve it or like uh, a classic part is like do not confuse like Python search and for logic. So like if and else statement, this is like only really for uh, like testing environment. And uh, usually when you run Python code, like there are no uh, there are no assertions happening. So this is usually uh, only for uh, for happening for for debugging. Um, all right, which brings us to the to the last one, which is then uh, broken access control. And uh, this is again, um, I said it here, the uh, the number one actually um, that you can see here. So you have um, like here, 94% uh, were tested for some broken access control. So it's it's really number one. And um, there is some some examples. So like the violation of the principle of the least privilege. Then uh, a key identifier change where uh, I will uh, check this. Uh, I will have a demo like in uh, or like a showcase in the next slide and uh, the privilege um, um, escalation there. So a classic example would be, hey, uh, you actually have the account details. You write in here like just uh, via the parameters um, ID, access key and, and um, access secret. And uh, basically you can or the attacker can then uh, give out the open secret there. So how to solve it? So this is very important. It's like validation verifications of, of requests, but I think this is also a given. Um, and then robust permissions and object level um, permissions so that the authorization, they need to be verified, like if this is an authorized user um, and if this is uh, like the, uh, the, the same request there. And um, important thing is like the authorization and accounting. So triple A, this is very important because once you authorize the user, not the user, not all users can do the same action, right? Like an admin user can change something in the database where uh, just the operator or something it, it just can do uh, like can do a read only or like uh, can can only go to specific parts of the of the application. Uh, what is uh, the, the the best practice is for sure, like especially in the beginning, like use a pre-built authentication system uh, framework. So Flask has one, Django has one. Uh, which is uh, which is pretty extensive. So before, like the, uh, before you would uh, uh, you write your own, definitely check out uh, these examples there. All right. So yeah, with that uh, being said, uh, I would like to uh, close it uh, with uh, like a notable tool set there and uh, with uh, a graphic. So um, it's like a pretty extensive graphic there. So but we're like uh, running out of time, I think. Uh, yeah. All right. Um, I will just uh, close one of this here. It's like that we started here, like with Python, with the with the um, uh, with the applications there. But there is so many other things like around it uh, with um, uh, with Kubernetes, with happening like between the containers, like outside of the of the cluster. Um, so all in all, um, um, we started just with the Python part. But all in all, there is a huge other uh, other ecosystem around it. Um, but yeah, with that being said, I hope you liked it uh, so far. We covered all these uh, vulnerabilities there and a bit uh, with uh, with the with the toolset. And and yeah, thanks uh, thanks for your attention. Thank you, everyone. Um, maybe we have time for maybe just one quick question. Do we have any remote questions? No. Anyone want to ask a question here? Can you use the mic, please? Hi there. Uh, great talk. Um, would you advocate using tools like um, mod security and WAF technologies as an extra measure? I would say so. So it's like. Um... It, it it really first of all of course the, uh, depends uh, depends on your setting, um, but I would say uh, I would say so that uh, this would definitely that you can 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 leverage that, and um, for for some other things it's like um, it depends on where exactly uh, like do you run it in a, in a Kubernetes cluster uh, do you run it um, like uh, remotely do you need uh, do the new does need remote access there, um, so th these kinds of things uh, you do definitely need. Uh, like need to have in mind, uh, but uh, but for that um, I would say go for it. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs>